Hi everyone! In this video I'll be doing an in-depth review of the Holo Taco Electric Hollows collection. We'll be taking a look at swatches of all five shades in the collection, colour comparisons to other polishes in the Holo Taco range, and finally I'll be looking at how these polishes perform in nail art techniques. So without further ado, let's get started. The Electric Hollows collection consists of five shades in a linear holographic formula and includes the long-awaited black and silver linear holo polishes, as well as three shockingly bright coloured shades. The first shade I'm swatching is Circuit Breaker. This is a silver linear holo polish and is essentially pure holographic pigment. It applies quite sheer, so I needed three coats for full coverage. I have noticed after using Circuit Breaker several times that it's already thickened up a little bit since I first opened it, so I've had to use nail polish thinner to keep it applying smoothly. This isn't really a problem for me. I've experienced this thickening with several of the linear holo polishes from Holo Taco, so I am used to thinning them with nail polish thinner, but it's something I thought I would mention so that you're aware that thinning might be required. The holographic flare is super prominent in this shade, unsurprisingly. I love the way this polish looks, and I just know this polish is going to become a staple in my nail art arsenal. With all the swatches, I finish by applying a quick dry glossy top coat, which intensifies the holographic rainbow flare and gives a beautiful shine. I also wanted to show you how each of the polishes look with a matte finish. This removes the holographic flare, but it shows the base colour of the polish and also results in a cool looking velvet effect. Here's Circuit Breaker next to the other silver holo polish from Holo Taco, Rainbow Snow, which is a holographic glitter formula. Next up is Full Charge. This is a vibrant lime green slash chartreuse shade that will be so fun for summer manicures. This shade also applies quite sheer, so I needed three coats for full coverage. I can imagine this shade being really fun for nail art designs, and even though it seems sheer as a single coat, it performs surprisingly well in my nail art tests which you'll see later in this video. I will warn you that after wearing this shade for a few days without a protective base coat, I did get some faint yellow staining on my nail, so do be sure to wear a protective base coat if you are worried about nail staining. Here's Full Charge with a glossy top coat. Here it is with a matte top coat. This is a colour comparison of Full Charge next to the other green shades from the Holo Taco Linear Holographic range. From left to right, we have Green Taffy, Full Charge, and Mint Mojito. Next up, we have Hot Wire Pink. This is a fabulous hot pink shade, and as you can see, it's richly pigmented and has fairly good coverage even with one coat. I did need two coats for full coverage. Even though it's highly pigmented, I didn't notice any staining after wearing it for a few days. Here is Hot Wire Pink with a glossy top coat. Here it is with a matte top coat. Now here's Hot Wire Pink next to the other pink shades from the Holo Taco Linear Holographic range. From left to right we have Magenta Jelly, Hot Wire Pink, and Pink Fizz. The next shade is called Hydro Power. This one is a bright aqua shade and it's my personal favourite of this collection. This polish is also very pigmented and it gives me full coverage with just two coats. I will warn you that this polish does leave a blue stain if you don't use a protective base coat, so do keep that in mind if you're trying to avoid nail staining.
Here is Hydropower with a glossy top coat. And here it is with a matte top coat. Now here's Hydropower next to the other blue shades from the Holotaco Linear Holographic range. So from left to right we have Blue Freezy, Hydropower and Sparkling Water. Finally, we have the highly anticipated black holo polish, Electrostatic. This is a very impressive black shade that gave me full coverage in just one coat. The Linear Holo Flare is a bit more subtle than in the other shades, basically because to make a black Linear Holo polish you have to finely balance the proportion of holographic pigments and black pigment so that it still has enough dark pigments to look black without completely hiding the holographic pigments. Here's Electrostatic with a glossy top coat. And here it is with a matte top coat. And here's a comparison of Electrostatic next to the other Holotaco black polish, One Coat Black. So here we have all five shades from the Electric Hollows collection side by side. I love the vibrancy of this collection. It's so fun to have some really almost neon linear hollow shades. Plus the black and silver hollows will be so fun to use in all sorts of different nail art techniques. And speaking of nail art techniques, I tested these polishes for doing sponged gradients, nail stamping and water marbling. So let's see how they perform. To do a sponge gradient, I'm using a makeup sponge and three different shades from the collection and I'm taking care to overlap the colours on the sponge. I started off with one coat of Circuit Breaker on the nail, which gives a nice holographic base and it helps the sponged polish adhere to the nail. I found that with all shades, two coats of the sponge gradient gave excellent results. The colours all blend together really well. As usual, with a sponged application, the linear holographic flare is reduced a little bit because sponging the polish on makes the surface a bit less smooth. Once a glossy top coat is applied and it's had time to dry, this still looks excellent. Next up, I wanted to see how these polishes could be used for nail stamping. I've had good results with stamping from all of the linear holo polishes from previous holo taco releases, and these polishes are no exception. First off, I tried stamping Circuit Breaker over Indigo Away, which is a deep indigo creme polish. I have to admit I was not expecting this to look so good. I would definitely do this combination again. The holographic stamp design stands out really well against the creme base, and it looks amazing. For all the other shades, I tried stamping them over a base of Circuit Breaker to see how well the pigments are able to stand out against the holographic silver base. I was incredibly impressed with the performance of both Hot Wire Pink and Electrostatic. Although they don't look quite as deep as they do when you apply them normally, they both look great stamped over Circuit Breaker and the resulting holographic nail art is something I would definitely wear again. Hydropower was a little bit less contrasting with Circuit Breaker, and so the design was a bit harder to see in the final product. Full 
Charge, as the most sheer of the coloured polishes in this collection, unsurprisingly didn't contrast very well over the silver base. Finally, I'm going to try some water marble designs with this collection. I decided to do a zigzag design featuring electrostatic with each of the other shades. So I start by applying drops of the polish into a cup of filtered room temperature water. You can see that these polishes water marble well, the polish drops are floating and expanding on the water, which is what you need. I'm then using a wooden pointed stick to drag out from the center and then back and forth to create zigzags. I'm then dunking a swatch stick into the part of the design I want and using a toothpick to clear away the excess polish from the surface of the water before pulling the swatch stick out. The swatch sticks were all given a base coat of circuit breaker to ensure a nice holographic finish. I hope you'll agree when I say these look excellent in water marble designs. All of the colours look pretty true to colour, and electrostatic still looks black even though water marbling causes the polish to be applied in really thin layers. Finally, just for fun, I wondered if I could intensify the hollow flare of electrostatic by finishing it off with one of these thin water marble coats, which would spread out the black pigment and thereby allow the holographic pigment to be a bit more visible. So I applied a normal coat of electrostatic to a swatch stick, and then in my water dish, I just placed a few drops of electrostatic and then dunked the swatch stick into that. The result, to be honest, isn't dramatically different to the normally applied polish, but I do think there's a slight intensification of the holographic rainbow flare in the water dunked version. What do you think? Is it worth it? So final thoughts. Overall, I'm very impressed with this collection. These shades are really fun for summer and I can definitely imagine using them all in nail art in the future. In some cases, I was genuinely shocked at how well they performed in the nail art techniques I tried. Now I'd like to know what you think. Do you have these polishes or are you still thinking about getting them? Let me know in the comments. If you liked this video and thought it was helpful, please leave a like, maybe check out some of my other videos, and I'll see you next time.